Well, it's been six days, and it's time to answer some of your questions. Hey, Banjo from Media Ward. So, as you know, I posted a Q&A video to allow um, you, my subscribers, to get to know me a bit more. Maybe through my film tastes, uh, maybe through my videos, you know, want to know specific things and stuff. And uh, I'm quite happy that I managed to get quite a few uh, questions from quite a few subscribers. Uh, so, yeah, thank you for everyone who's... Uh, to ask me some questions so far, it's been really fantastic, and uh, yeah, I'll, I'll answer the questions now. Well, this most likely be a part one video, and I'll probably do a part three video, maybe in a couple of days' time. But uh, I will do my best to answer my questions I can in this video. We'll see how it goes. Uh, so yeah, I'm really happy with the questions. Uh, some completely random, some really straightforward, and uh, yeah, I look forward to answering them, and hopefully I like the answers I give. So yeah, I'll get straight to it. Uh, don't want to waste time in it. Uh, got straight from the bottom, work my way up, kind of thing. Mint. Uh, first set of questions comes from Marky Man HD. Uh, it says, "Hey mate, here is my questions." Yep. Uh, it's, it's asked five questions, so I'll answer that. Uh, favorite Batman movie? Um, very, very simple. That would be The Dark Knight Rises. Um, that I really, really enjoyed. That was everything that I wanted to see in that movie, and so much more. I was so worried that movie was gonna maybe a letdown. You know, being the last of the trilogy kind of thing, and I was so wrong. I'm really, really, really happy that I was wrong. You know, it's the best of the trilogy, in my opinion. It's a bigger epic scale. The uh, it's an end to an arc. It comes full, full circle in a sense, and it was really done well. Uh, script was fantastic. The soundtrack was amazing. Bane, you know, was made it fantastic also, and uh, Batman and all that stuff. The characters are amazing and stuff. I really, really enjoyed that movie. And The Dark Knight Rises would be my personal favourite. But to be honest, I do think The Dark Knight, the Joker, Heath Ledger, is a stronger villain. But that's, you know, a, that's a different topic in a sense. But um, yeah, The Dark Knight Rises is my, is my definitive bat favourite Batman movie, and I think it always will be, to be honest. But don't get me wrong, I still love Batman Begins and I do love The Dark Knight, so yeah. <laughs> okay, question two. Uh, favorite Marvel movie? That's going to be quite easy to be honest. It will have to be the Avengers. That was something I really was really looking forward to this year. And uh, of course, I've been watching um, the pre-Avengers movies like Iron Man One and lots of Iron Man Two, and uh, it's been building up over the years. And it's got to that final moment. You know, ever since I saw that, you know, after scene credit, you know, an Iron Man with Nick Fury and all that. Ooh, and then, of course, the Incredible Hulk and all that. Yeah, I was really looking forward to the Avengers, and I was just so happy. Um, Josh Sweden uh, managed to get a fantastic script. I managed to put all these characters into one movie. I managed to, you know, not outshine, you know, other characters. Usually, with most movies, there's always one character that's, you know, bigger and has more screen time than the others. You know, all the characters I thought in that movie had lots of screen time and uh, had lots of. Um, you know, chances to shine, I, I, I jokes, had moments, action scenes and stuff, so I was really, really happy. I'm looking forward to the extended cut, which is going to be coming out next month. That's going to be an extra half an hour footage, so that's going to be add to the movie. I think they'll add more character development, even more to what we know, so yeah, re really looking forward to that. So yeah, The Avengers will have to be my personal favourite uh, uh, Marvel movie, but if I had to say non-Avengers, uh, probably be The Incredible Hulk most likely, because... I, I am a big Hulk fan myself, and that was really fantastic. I really enjoyed that. So, yeah, that's non-Avengers if I had to pick that. So, yeah. Uh, f f question three. Sorry. <laughs> uh, Coke or Pepsi? Uh, probably Pepsi, most likely. Oh, I do enjoy Pepsi quite a bit. But I do enjoy Coke quite a bit, you know. So, But I think Pepsi I drink more often than I drink Coke, to be honest. So, yeah. Uh, question four: uh, Do you care for slipcases? Uh, kind of yes and no in a sense. Um, uh, slipcases only become an issue for me when it's uh, when it's inconsistencies with with, with, with like a, a look or something. For instance, like um, uh, say you have like a trilogy of movies or something. So like the Die Hard movies, which I've got downstairs. Um, I have my I have my Die Hard one and two box set. Um, a diet, diet three vengeance and diet four the um, ultimate edition the the uncut version uh, extended version whatever and they all had slip cases and they all had but the third one looked out of place and it bugged the shit out of me so what I had to do is um, ages back long long time back I had to go out and find a blue slip case so it would look nice and it would look in, in, you know stop like an inconsistency uh, that's the only time it ever bugs me to be honest and I do I don't mind slip cases you know if they look nice and you know the then it works, yeah. But most slipcases for me, they always it's always the start 
um, at the start of a row or end of a row. You know, if, it, if it's a slipcase of a trilogy or something or a box set, I always wrap up the end or the start of a row and I work my way up from there because otherwise it just looks a bit, bit you know, weird and kind of thing, you know. So, slipcases, they don't bother me and they do bother me at the same time. I'm only thinking some consistencies. Probably the biggest one I had to do is probably Iron Man 2. I bought the special edition of that, which um, I said in a previous video, that special edition was bullshit. I paid an extra five purely because of incons inconsistency. Because of the first one, I had one with a slipcase, and I could have bought the single disc version of Iron Man 2, no slipcase, and it, just looked, it looked very, very weird. So I just bought the special edition purely because of the, yeah, the other slipcase, and I like the artwork more on that one, to be honest, than I like that one than the other one. But that special edition is bullshit, and I, I do want the, uh, the Blu-ray edition of that, so... They kind of do and they don't. It's it's just mainly inconsistencies myself. So yeah. Okay. Question five. Uh, what would you do if you run if you randomly start talking like Batman? Well, I would probably put on a mask most likely and uh, put on a cape. And I'll being that I'm like six foot four tall, I'll probably scare a couple of people and I'll probably intimidate people that I, I don't like and stuff. And you know, intimidate my friends and all that stuff, I think, probably most likely, because I'm Batman, kind of thing, you know. <laughs> I love to have that voice, even though he'll probably, you know, screw up my voice box after a while, you know, hate to imagine singing, you know, Batman, <laughs> kind of thing, yeah. Yeah, I might, I'll, I'll be fine with it, I think, myself, yeah. Sweet, sweet. So, yeah, that's the five questions from uh, Marky Man HD. Thank you very much, mate. I'll uh, uh, proceed on. Uh, next set of questions comes from Owen the Reviewer. He's asked three questions. Uh, question one, what is your favourite horror movie? Um, again, that is quite hard to answer, mainly because I like a lot of horror movies. You know, it's, I can't have a definitive movie which can say that is my ultimate favourite, in a sense. Um, I would say, growing up-wise, you know, my favourite movies, like, kind of growing up, the ones that I really, really enjoyed and... We always thought were very original and you know instant classics in my eyes. Well, obviously John Carpenter's Halloween, uh, The Omen, uh, Nightmare on Elm Street. Those movies that always have a special place, you know, in my heart for um, horror movies. Wise, they were very original, very creepy, and very well done, you know. And still are today. I, I, uh, the movies that for me keep getting better every time I watch them. Yeah, they are instant classics for me. Some people could disagree, and they they, they could be quite dated for other people. For me non sliders they they always be a personal favourites growing up on thing. So yeah, um, I have the special editions of them as also I have the special edition of Man Street, uh Halloween I have the twenty five year uh, years of terror, it's the four disc edition and uh, the Omen and have the anniversary edition so I like those movies definitely. Um probably my most current ones. It's because my Halloween well Halloween kinda of like horror based movies, um are always growing and the changing. I like to see something different. I don't like to see the same thing over and over again. So uh, my favourite ones currently at the moment, which I thought were very original and very, you know, fantastic and interesting mix take upon the horror genre, is probably be um, Behind the Mask, the, the Rise of Leslie Vernon, which I recommend to everybody, and uh, The Cabin in the Woods. So I thought they were two really fantastic um, horror movies with a twist kind of thing. You know, kind of sub genre horror movies. Oh, I thought they were really good. So yeah, okay. Uh, question two: uh, What is your favorite Jim Carrey movie? Um, um, that's pretty easy, I think, to be honest. Uh, I, I like one in particular. Um, well, my, some of my favorite ones are uh, I like The Cable Guy. I don't care what people say about that movie. I think it is really, really funny, and I love the uh, lines that he does. I think it's just so funny. Well done, you know, like yeah. Uh, you know, life should have theme music. Da -da 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 I love that. So funny. He's just, he's great in that performance, and it's a very interesting movie. You know, dark comedy. I like dark comedy a lot. Uh, favorite Jim Carrey movie there would be The Treatment Show, definitely. That proves to me that he was not only funny in his movies, but he's also a fantastic serious actor. And that movie for me was like, wow, he he's a really good actor. And again, uh, number twenty. Uh, Two, number 23 sorry uh, that you think it was like a bit of a nutter in that one that was a bit of a dark movie and again he can do really good serious movies if he wants to and uh, he should do more to be honest but he doesn't seem to do a lot really these days now seems to be a bit off the radar which is a shame but yeah The Treatment Show that's my favourite I love that movie great fantastic stuff Wait, third one um, what would you do if you picked up one of your Blu-rays and it start talking probably I'll be shocked at first then I will say, yes, I am fucking rich, because I have got a talking Blu-ray in my hands. Do you know how many people around the world are going to see and want to talk to a talking Blu-ray? 
I am rich. I'm settled for life. <laughs> I will probably have some sort of like, um, you know, sign outside my house or something. You know, come and see the amazing uh, talking Blu-ray. You know, wonders. You know, I'll probably get a lot of you know, dough for that kind of thing. So yeah, I think I'll be very very happy if my uh, Blu-ray start talking to me. You know, you might do one day. You know, I've got a few down there. You know, just a bit quiet at the moment, I suppose. So. <laughs> so yeah, that's the first three questions from uh, that's the first three questions from Owen the reviewer. Uh, thank you very much, mate. Much appreciated. Uh, okay, and the last questions of the video, I think, uh, is from Mac and Cheese reviews. Um, yeah, I have a question for you guys. Also, um, is that Mac and Cheese reference from Friends by any chance? You know the. Uh, uh, Joey, when he does that TV show Mac and Cheese, you know, the robot. I'm just curious if that's a reference to that. You know, I'm sure it is, but like, I'm just curious if it is or not. So, yeah, thanks, guys. Yeah, uh, they've asked five questions. Uh, yeah, uh, congrats on 100 videos, Andrew. And here's my questions. Okay, cool. Let's take a look. Um, who is your favorite film director, and what is your favorite film that uh, they have directed? Um, favorite film director and I don't know if, um, it's quite hard to be honest. I've, I've quite a few uh, good directors which I really enjoy uh, their performance. Well, their their kind of talents on screen. Um, Christopher Nolan, he's pretty good. Um, he's one he's one of my favorite directors. Um, you know, Memento and um, Inception and of course the Batman movies and stuff. Um. Uh, what's what's one what's, what's the ones? Um, James, I think it's James um, One. I think he's if I said that correctly. He did the um, Saw movie, the first one. He directed that one. He co-created that movie also. Um, yeah, that was actually really really good. He's he's one of my favorite directors. He's done a lot of good movies. Um, he's done like uh, Death Sentence, uh, Dead Silence, and he's done Insidious also. He's a really fantastic director. He's a very um, underrated one, I think myself and. He's, the movies that he's done, I, I've liked all of them myself. And I've, the only one I haven't got is probably Dead uh, Silence. It's the one I haven't got yet from his uh, movies. But yeah, that was really fantastic. And um, First Saw movie is fantastic. He, he co-created that and uh, he worked really hard making that movie and watching the extras and stuff. Fantastic. Um, what would I just say? James Cameron's pretty good also. He's one of my favourite directors. Um, yeah, there's, there's quite a few. I, I, I do like Clint Eastwood. He's, been, he's really fantastic. He, he's some really good work also. And... Um, Flags of Fathers, uh, Gran Turismo, and uh, yeah, I, I like the fact when people, you know, you get a director which um, also, you know, directs and stars in a movie also. Uh, David Swimmer, he's pretty good also. He did a film called Trust, which um, he, he only directed in that one also, but he's really fantastic, which if you don't know who David Swimmer is, he is Ross from Friends, but he did a really fantastic work in that movie, and uh, yeah. Uh, so yeah, I, I have quite a few favorite directors to be honest. Um, you know, they all do fantastic work, and yeah, they're, they're just some of the ones that I really, really enjoy. Um, they're, they're directing style and directed, uh, you know, uh, talents on screen. So yeah, I hope that answers the questions for you. <laughs> so uh, question two: um, If you were a superhero, what powers would you want and why? Uh, probably time travel, most likely, because that way I can see any movie, any time, kind of thing. If there's a future movie, which which says for next year, which is The Man of Steel, looking forward to that next year, and um, I can go into the future, I'm going to watch that movie in the cinemas, and I can go a little further into the future, and I can pick up the Blu-ray, and come back to the present day, and add it to my collection. How cool is that, eh? <laughs> and also, there's a movie which I like, which, uh, say an 80s movie, or Godfather movie, or some, a cult classic movie, like The Godfather, or Aliens. I can go back into the past, and watch a movie at the cinemas there and there. Fucking awesome, eh? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'd love to have time travel. That'd be so cool. I can see into the future. I can see what movie's going to be good, what movie's going to be bad. And I can watch all of my favourite movies at cinemas. So, yeah. Awesome. Time travel. Definitely. Yeah, uh, question three. What is your favourite uh, Godfather part one or part two? Part two. Very easily, yeah. Uh, part two, I thought, was just really fantastic. Al Pacino, he was amazing in that movie. And it was, it was a bit of like... Uh, Bit of an interesting development for the movie, you know, because the first one also, he, he, you know, didn't want that kind of heritage and stuff, and he kind of like fully embraced it in the second one kind of thing, and he became a really different person. So, yeah, part two I thought was much more powerful, much more um, stamped for me, I think, was was really good. So, yeah, part two, definitely. Okay, uh, question four uh, What would you do if you woke up and Clint Eastwood was in your bed? 
Uh, probably first to say, was it good enough? Was it good for you? Then it was for me. Yeah, probably say that. Yeah. I'll probably sleep with Clint Yeah, pretty creepy. Yeah, I know. I know. I'm creepy. <laughs> yeah, uh, Clint Eastwood in my bed, eh? Uh, yeah, well, I'll probably take his a compliment to be honest. You know, he's come all the way from, you know, his uh, his bed to come to my bed. So, yeah, I'd take that as a compliment, definitely. Not many people would uh, want that. Plus, get an autograph later, maybe. Get my uh, Grand Tourism DVD or something along those lines. Yeah, get, get a signature. Pretty awesome, eh? <laughs> cool. And question for our last question, which, why do we fall? So we can learn to pick ourselves up. Simple, eh? Very simple. Use those words. Use those words wisely. <laughs> so yeah, uh, that's the questions for um, a part one video. Um, hope you enjoy watching this video, and thanks to the people that have uh, asked me the questions: Mac and Cheese, uh, uh, Marky Man HD, and uh, Owen the Reviewer. Thank you very much for those questions. Um, hope you got the answers, and uh, there will be a part two video very very soon. So yeah, um, I'm putting the link in the description below for my original video. Uh, so if you have any more questions, ask away kind of thing. So in the meantime, it's Andrew from me with from DV. Sorry, God.